Well, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Kristen Gallerno. I'm the curator of communications and information technology here at the Henry Ford. It means I'm the curator of a lot of things, radios, televisions, but one of my personally, my favorite collections is the history of video games. So um, I was very lucky a few uh, months ago to start conversing um, with the channels that made it necessary in order to get the Atari cartridges out on the floor that I hope all of you uh, saw today. And even better, I was able to uh, find Mr. Andrew Reinhardt here. So um, please join me in uh, welcoming uh, him to, uh, oh, we got just a few more minutes. We've got a, another technical glitch here. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's like, welcome to office. Huh? Yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. We should be good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you all for coming. Please join me in welcoming Andrew. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for coming tonight, uh, uh, this afternoon. Uh, this is really great. If you haven't been by the table, um, we are by the DC3 and the Mothership. Uh, so come by and take a look at the Atari games that are from the excavation, um, as well as uh, uh, you know, the clothes that I wore when I was doing the digging and some other cool stuff. So, so you know, if you have any questions after the lecture, come over and, and take a look. Um, for those of you who are kind of new to the story, um, I wanted to talk a, a little bit about what happened and why we were actually doing the dig um, in Alamogordo, New Mexico last April. Um, Rumor had it that uh, E.T. was the worst video game of all time, and that's debatable. I'm not, I'm not subscribing to that, but I'm just saying that that's, that's debatable. Um, and, you know, it was one of the very first movie tie-ins uh, for video games um, and for motion pictures. And here we see uh, Steven Spielberg uh, with Howard Scott Warshaw, who was given five weeks to do a video game to meet the Christmas market to carry in with the tie-in for the movie. Uh, which is an impossible task, and it's remarkable that he did it as well as he did. Um, we're going to skip the commercial for in the interest of time. But come by the booth and see it. Um, some other cool things, and, and actually some other not cool things that were surrounding um, you know, this mystery of, of the excavation of what actually, or, or the burial of actually you know, what happened, was um, that there are mercury pigs, um, rumors of mercury pigs that were buried in the landfill along with unexploded World War II ordnance and some other fun things. And as an archaeologist, you kind of go in, it's like, do I wear my hard hat or my helmet um, when, when going into something like this? And so digging in landfill is uh, it's a rare treat you know, for an archaeologist to be able to do. This doesn't happen, and it's usually because of safety and environmental concerns like this one. We didn't find any mercury pigs or anything like that, um, you know, happy to say. So with the, with the burial of the game um, by Atari, rumor had it that the game was so bad that Atari just wanted to get rid of it somehow. That's, that's the rumor, and that's part of the urban legend, and this happened back in 1983. Um, as, as we discovered doing research, and this is also research being done by Joe Lewandowski and others at the city of Alamogordo, is uh, they actually had photographs of the dump happening, and this was published in two newspaper articles, one in the New York Times and one in the Alamogordo Daily News the day that the dump actually occurred. But because this is pre-internet, it got lost to history, and everybody said, well, you know, it, it just became an urban legend. And conspiracy theorists online, because that's what the internet is for, um, is you know, basically getting together and saying, um, you know, this didn't happen or this did happen, and it's like millions of copies of E.T. got buried down there. And so as an archaeologist, you're thinking, well, if a story like that you know, really has a lot of legs, there's some truth and there's some fiction, so let's go find out what's going on. Um, and so this is an archival photograph from 1983 of, of part of the story where the cement trucks had come down after the dump was completed to dump cement slurry over the games to prevent looting by the kids in the neighborhood who were coming in at night to go and pick up the games and rip off consoles and then take them, you know, take them back to their homes uh, you know, to play. So this is actually part of the story that's true. Um, we actually had a thing on Snopes, uh, which is kind of the rumor and, and, and myth-mongering site. And so the ET was on Snopes, and it's now been verified that the dump actually happened on Snopes. So that's good. Um, so what did we do? You know, how do we decide to excavate and why? Um, as an archaeologist, I'm also a gamer. I've been gaming. Uh, and television was my first console, actually. But I used to sneak out of the house. <laughs> Thank you. I used to sneak out of my house and go play Atari, um, you know, at night at my friend's place. Um, but... Uh, you know, so I was interested in video games. I was interested in archaeology. I'm a, prof I'm a professional archaeologist. 
And I learned in June 2013 that Fuel Entertainment had partnered with Xbox and Lightbox, which was generating content for Xbox Live. Uh, Lightbox is now defunct because they were going to do a, a documentary about the excavation and uh, to see if the urban legend of the dumping of Atari material into E.T. was actually true. So I wrote to the production companies as an archaeologist. I said, well, you know, how are you doing the archaeology of the games? You know, is this just a big treasure hunt? Is it a stunt? Or are you actually going to do some real science? And, and they said, well, I don't know. How would you do the dig? And so I said, well, maybe we should do it X, Y, and Z. Um, and, and they said, well, okay. And then a few months later, um, you know, maybe two months out from the actual dig actually happening, um, uh, representatives from Lightbox got in touch with me and said, well, we'd really like to have archaeology be a part of this, and so why don't you get a team together? It's like the A-team, you know? It's like, okay, here we go. And, and, so, and so we came up with a good plan, um, and we went out and, uh, and did the excavation. Um, and so this was heavily promoted. Um, there were hundreds of people on site for the excavation. And there, this was what it was originally going to be called. I mean, the documentary that came out for Netflix and Showtime is called Atari Game Over. Um, and so they originally called it Dumping the Alien, and you could go and be a part of the audience and be a part of history on April 26th. Um, a little side note, uh, this is the archaeological team. We call ourselves punk archaeologists because we, we like to adopt things that other people think are, is not either real science or real archaeology. Um, so we're really interested in the archaeology of the recent past, uh, the archaeology of late capitalism, what's happening with corporations and economics and the like. Um, and so, you know, this is the team um, that we assembled in order to do the excavation. The center guy, Rayford Gwynns, he's actually a professor of video game history at SUNY Stony Brook. That kind of thing exists. It's a cool job. Um, so what do we do on the first day? Um, well, the first day was not a lot of digging, but it was a little bit of exploration. Um, through some legwork, we found out where Atari's warehouse had been in, in El Paso, Texas. This is 90 miles uh, away from Alamogordo, New Mexico. So uh, some of the team went to the warehouse just to photograph it, and you can see it looks like a warehouse. So this is, this is but warehouses by their nature are finite in space. Um, and so one of, the, one of the reasons why the dump actually occurred back in 1983 was that the warehouse actually ran out of space. They didn't know what to do with the returns coming back from Walmart and from Target of all these games like E.T. and Pac-Man and the like. They just overproduced and nobody bought. Um, and so that's why the dump happened. And the trucks came from here. This is the site of the landfill. And, you know, you can look at it and you say, well, what the hell are we going to dig? <laughs> you know, we, we have no idea, um, you know, where to put the spade until... Um, one of the landfill owners back in the 80s, Joe Lewandowski, uh, did a science called archaeometry, which is basically a way of looking at photographs um, and looking at the landscape in order to do some mathematics to pinpoint a location in which something might have happened. And so it's through his efforts that uh, the dig actually found Atari material. Um, based on his calculations, we brought in a, what's called a bucket auger. A bucket auger is basically like this 50-foot tall, it looks like, almost like an oil derrick. It's actually like a 50-foot tall drill bit and it goes straight down into the earth, and then you turn it on, and it brings stuff up from whatever depth you send it to. And so we put it down to about 30, 35 feet. We dug about eight test holes. And on the eighth test hole, we were allowed to dig 20. So the clock was ticking. The, the state of New Mexico said, you have 20 test holes before things get too, you know, too you know, unsafe. And so by hole number eight, we pulled up a box, and we're like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> and so we were able to say, we're going to dig here tomorrow. And this is my field director, Richard Rothus, actually at the standpipe that was planted, it's basically X marks the spot. You know, X never marks the spot? Well, that's true, it's a pipe. Um, and so here he is, we've recorded, the, uh, we've recorded this. And I can give you the GPS coordinates if you stop by the table so that you know where to go and look. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not kidding. Um, so uh, on the first day... Uh, <laughs> Um, the author, Ernie Klein, was there. He wrote Ready Player One, and he also wrote Armada, uh, which came out a couple of weeks ago. He owns the DeLorean from Back to the Future, and he had a life-size doll of E.T. in Elliot's hoodie uh, <laughs> sitting in the passenger seat. And so, you know, people like this were coming from all over the place, you know, you know nerds and fanboys, and, you know, I'm one of these guys. It's like, here I am digging my own cultural heritage, uh, you know, right before my eyes. And so he was there. This was outside our hotel that morning. Um, and so, you know, as far as the first day of the dig is concerned, we brought in the big toys. Um, this is the biggest excavator we could possibly find. And so it was operated by the crew from Alamogordo, and we started digging 30 feet down in the landfill, looking for what we were calling, lovingly calling the Atari level. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, and so it basically scoop after scoop of what's called overburden, um, or spoil, in archaeological terms. Um, until we got down to where we thought the games were actually going to be. Um, these were actually, uh, the spoil was actually deposited into dump trucks. They had a fleet of dump trucks working for the city that would take it from the old landfill 
which was, had been closed in the 1990s, to the new landfill, which, had, uh, you know, which is like 20 miles out of town. And so they kept cycling the trucks for the entire day, just full of trash um, you know, from the 1980s and 1990s. Here's us looking into the hole. <laughs> Uh, we started finding some cool things that dated from around the period where the Atari dump was supposed to have happened. So we've got old school Pepsi bottles, you know, that were glass that had the styrofoam wrappers. And so we figured we were getting close. Uh, we also found some cool things on that first day. Um, you know what this is? This is Play-Doh. <laughs> this is Play-Doh from like 1985. <laughs> and we opened, up the, we opened up the jar, we took out the Play-Doh balls, and they were still squishy. And we're like, this is great. And it's like, man, we're burning daylight here. We got to you know, put the toys away. Um, one of the other cool things that we found on that first day um, was this. These are grass clippings from like 1984 that were still green. Because these things are buried so far deep in the desert, it's called an anaerobic environment. So there's no bacteria or anything to kind of get in there and chew stuff up. So we opened this bag of lawn clippings, and it was green grass. And we could watch it turn brown before our eyes. Yeah, and so, you know, one of the cool things is not just digging a tar, but, like, seeing what happens in trash over time. It was like, you know, we were just geeking out in all kinds of levels, archaeologically and gaming. And it's like everything. It had everything for us. This is the hole. Uh, it's called a puncture. Um, because we had so few days and so little time uh, in order to do any kind of, of, of real archaeological excavation, we, did, uh, we treated it more like a salvage. So we created a puncture, and this, this hole is probably, you know, 30 feet down and maybe 15 feet on a side. Uh, and so we could get the arm down in to start scooping stuff out to put at the side of the trench. And then, you know, the end of the day came, and Union said we had to stop, and so we did. And that brings us to actually finding the stuff on April 26, 2014. There are crowds of people, uh, and I've never dug in front of a crowd before. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, never been in a, I'd never been, like, filmed digging before, and so I didn't sleep at all that previous night. And so we get in there. It's like 7.30 in the morning. There's all these people, you know, just out there really excited about what it is that we're going to find, us included. Um, and so, you know, here we are setting up the table. Um, you know, we, we, we brought our technology with us. Uh, we brought our five-gallon buckets, you know, to create, you know, to, to keep finds, you know, that were coming up out of the ground. We had a tough book with us, um, you know, so that we can, we can have that with us in the trench. And we started digging. Now, and any archaeologist will tell you that, you know, you're always looking for a secure date for something. You, you want to be sure that you're in the right spot, in the right place in time. And the best way to do that is either by finding coins or by finding what's called, you know, an inscription. We want to find a piece of writing with a date on it. That rarely happens. Well, wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? That we found, <laughs> we found a copy of the newspaper about the dump on the front page. Tons of Atari kids. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> we found, we found this stuff. We hadn't found this stuff yet, but it's like, man, we are so close. <laughs> Um, and, and, so, and so we knew we were in the right spot. And, uh, and then this fellow, uh, Tony Gonzalez, um, came down from Colorado. He, you see what he's holding here? The, yes, it's a, it's a controller for the 2600. It's the little top of the joystick. I'm like, where did you find that? He's like, by the toilet. Um, <laughs> like, so we knew we were digging in the right spot there as well. Uh, it's called a surface find. Um, where you, you're basically looking on the ground and you find stuff that, that is meaningful for the excavation. And so in this case, this is very meaningful for us. It's the first Atari evidence that we really found aside from the newspaper. So finally, we started bringing stuff up out of the ground. Um, the digger, because it was so unsafe, the archaeologists weren't allowed in the hole because it was always a constant danger of the soil and the trash collapsing in on us and nobody was a dead archaeologist. Maybe. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, uh, the, the, <laughs> yes. Um, so basically, they started dumping um, buckets of trash along the sides of the trench, and we would take a bucket core with the five-gallon bucket um, in order to analyze a subset of what was coming up out of the trench, and we started seeing things like this. Oh, you notice um, everybody's wearing masks and respirators. I was wearing this. Um, it's called a buff. Um, and then I've got a respirator at the table as well because we're digging in a landfill and nobody wants to breathe landfill dust from 30 years ago because you will get lung fungus and die. And so you better be wearing something like this. This is a stack of games. This is like a stack of Defender games still in blister packs coming up out of here. Now, one of the things that Atari had said when they actually did the, um, did the burial was that this was just, yeah, it was, it was uh, non-functioning merchandise or broken merchandise, and that is not true. We found unopened packs that had been returned from Walmart and from Target, still with the price tags on them, 
some of them still in cardboard boxes, and they just chucked them in the they just chucked them in the landfill, and they're perfectly good games. Here are uh, 2,600 Atari controllers that we found. We were expecting to find millions of ET games, and that was clearly not the case. Instead, what we found we found over 40 different titles of games. ET was roughly 10% of what we found. So, um, the total number of cartridges in the burial. Um, about 800,000. We only had time to excavate and recover 1,300 for, for further analysis. But we also found hardware. And, and so, you know, there we are, um, you know, with, with controllers. We found pieces of 2,600s. We found some 5,200 parts. Um, you know, oh, Pac-Man. This is one of the most reviled games also, just because it was a terrible port from the, ca from the cabinet game, you know, to, to the console. But we found it, and for good reason. Um, that was me editorializing. So, you know, once, once the stuff started coming out of the ground, the team would, would then take the buckets over to tables, we would measure, we would photograph, we would take notes, we would catalog, you know, as the stuff was coming up. And we would, we would have a, a series of buckets, some for depositing, um, you know, things that would ultimately end up in museums like the Henry Ford Museum. Oh, thank you very much for having me, by the way. Um, and, and other museums like the Smithsonian, uh, the Regamas Museum, which is a video, museum, a video game museum in Rome, um, ended up with copies as well. And so we are pulling things for the museums to have. We also wanted to document other things too. This is concrete. Part of the urban legend was that the, the games were covered in concrete. They were, they were just buried in this stuff. And that was somewhat true. We saw the photo of the cement mixer, but we also see here a big chunk of concrete. And some of the games that we found had a slurry of concrete or a sheen of concrete over them um, that was coming up. So that part of the legend was also true. Um, towards the end of the day, see all this stuff? You think all this is trash? No, this is all Atari and nothing but. Atari games, Atari cartridges, boxes, Atari comic books. Um, that used to be inserted. It's called Atari Force, if you guys collect. Um, you know, you have an Atari Force comic books. Um, cardboard boxes, what we called six packs, that had six games per box, still unopened, in excellent shape. Um, this was ironic. <laughs> <laughs> the ET games actually had this coupon stuffed inside. So once you were done you know, wasting your time with ET, you could go and play a fun game like Indiana Jones. Um, <laughs> and so... And so there we are. So that was, that was, that was delightful for us. Um, and then this is the, the shot seen around the world. Reuters took this photograph, and then it ended up, I love this picture. <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a video game journalist named Naomi Kyle, and she was carrying on this ET in a backpack. And so that, that made headlines. And so people started picking this up, and it started to trend. And, and for an archaeologist, this is really special because, you know, when we do digs, nobody cares. Nobody's really paying attention unless it's like the freaking Titanic or something. And so, and so one, of the, one of my guys is like, we broke Twitter. We're like, what do you mean we broke Twitter? He's like, it's trending globally. And then it was trending on Facebook, and then all the news agencies started. My mom called me. It's like, why are you on the cover of the Forbes website? What? <laughs> I don't know, Mom. Why are you reading Forbes? <laughs> So, so what happened? What happened afterwards, you know? And, and this is the part of the story that, that, that no one really, really seems to, to know, is, you know, everybody was there for the stuff. You know, the big reveal is like, oh, here, you know, here are the games, and, and then everybody goes home, except us, you know, because we're archaeologists. And it's not just about finding the stuff, it's about understanding it and kind of looking at, at what's going on. So, where did the games go? They went into this truck. This truck, all those bags that you see there were bagged up by city workers, and each of those contains maybe 100 to 150 Atari games, cartridges, boxes, and whatnot. Um, the roll pack that you see there inside there are special games that we've been picking also for, uh, for delivery to museums. So once we got these off of, the, off of the truck, we started unbagging them. And we photographed everything you know, that was coming out of the bags to try to make sense of, of if, is there, are there any kind of patterns going on you know, with, with the, you know, the disposition of the artifacts. And so here, it's like, look, these are six boxes of Defender stuck together. These would have been shipped in, in cardboard. We've got blister-packed uh, centipede. Um, we've got wires for controllers up at the top. And so all of this is just coming out of one sack. And so it's just a big mismatch of, of, of all of this stuff. We've got some loose games as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to attempt to play this. I'm going to attempt to play this video um, briefly, just to show you a little bit about about. Um, yeah, this is footage we shot. Um, it's it's a couple of minutes long, but I think it's worth it, so that you can actually see what we dumped out in the warehouse as we started the cataloging process. And so you know you're kind of flying around here, but you can just see the variety of games um, and conditions and everything. And because you're buried in a desert. Nothing really decomposes, nothing decays, the paper still feels like paper, nothing is brittle, none of the plastic was really cracked, 
with the exception of this one. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, sorry about the vertigo. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look. If there's anything of interest, I'll, I'll let you know. But, yeah, nothing but, there's a sword quest manual. Nothing but centipedes. This is nothing <laughs> but centipede games in plastic. These are controllers. It's like Star Raiders, I think, is the, uh, is the game. These, a pile of Star Raider controllers just chucked, chucked in the landfill. There, there's a cardboard box full of games that are stuck together. That's Bill Carraher from the University of North Dakota. He does uh, cultural resource management also. All right, and it yeah, it just goes on and on. There's just so much, so much of that just wonderful stuff. Um, so, you know, we started cataloging them again. We photographed these things at tables. You know, we've got, uh, we've got our whiteboard to record what it is that we're doing. Uh, North Arrow, not so important, off of excavation, but at least it has a scale. And, uh, yeah, so we just started unpacking and unboxing and, and labeling of these things. And under the watchful eye of the city, by the way, you know, it's like, can't take anything. It's like, we don't want anything. We just wanted to get the data. You guys do what you want. Um, and so here we go. Here's a bunch of ET games that came out of the landfill. The, actually, the very first ET game, uh, the first game that we discovered was an ET game out of the landfill. And so you'll notice the ones on the right, these have concrete on them. So that was pretty cool. One of them has a return label on it. Yeah, Atari Unboxed, or ET Unboxed. This is an example of a six-pack of games that were just returned and then buried without even being unpacked or sold. Some of them had price tags. One of these games actually had a return address label for the person who, who had returned the game, and it had an address in New Jersey. I live in New Jersey, and I was really tempted to go and take that game and just, it's like, you missing this, kid? <laughs> I'm like, it's like I, I wouldn't say I'm missing it. Um, here's some of the controllers. So we've got a Star Raiders controller. We've got a tennis controller. We've got a 2600 controller. Now look at the 2600 controller. I'm going to see if I can use the laser beam here. This is snipped. And this was true of all of the 2600 controllers that we'd found. Now, why, why would you snip a controller before you bury it? Yeah, there was some forethought in, in, the, in the warehouse in El Paso before burying this stuff. Okay, almost done. Two minutes. Okay, we're, we're so close. Um, but, but you're right. So there's, there's, they knew what they were doing in burying this stuff. Here's an Atari Force comic that we found that's in pretty good shape. Um, after, after it was all over, we swept them up into a big pile, rebagged them, and then put them behind two locked doors at the city of Alamogordo's uh, uh, building so they could decide what it was that they wanted to do with them. So after we got home, what did we do? We started playing with data. We've already been publishing in some journals, and we've got our final report coming out in the International uh, Journal of Historical Archaeology. Um, and we're making all of this available for free uh, as CC0, and I've given a copy to the Henry Ford Museum. So every photo we shot, every video we took, all the audio is there, and, and the museum has it now as well. Conspiracy theorists? <laughs> the, the, they're calling them, we're calling them Atari truthers. <laughs> this dig never happened. It was a fake. It was like the moon landing. And they believe it. And I'm like, no, 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 it's real. You can see our data. <laughs> I'd never been converted into a meme before, so that was, an exci that was exciting. The onion picked us up. <laughs> like, who awakens this ancient evil? It's like, it was us. <laughs> it was us. And so, and Conan O'Brien had a segment on this about other games that had been buried and forgotten about. Um, but the real thing is, is that because the games were excavated within city limits and within city property for Alamogordo, the city decided that they would sell some of the games at auction. And so some of you might have bid on these things or seen these things up for bid. Um, some of the ET games went for over $700. Now, all of, all of the money made from the auctions went to fund, um, I believe, the Tularosa Basin Historical Society. So it went to a nonprofit good cause, which is the Historical Society of Alamogordo. Um, and a lot of the games went to museum collections as well. And they're holding on to some other games, maybe for future sale. And then, of course, there was the movie, uh, Atari Game Over, that we were a part of, um, that is on... Uh, Xbox Live and Showtime and Netflix. And that's what I have for you today. I think I've been through my 20 minutes. Um. Uh, 
All right, we have, we have time for a couple of questions. If we can't answer some of the questions, come see me at the table because I'm right over there. Yes, sir. Yeah, we actually had a bunch of 2600 controllers hooked up to old school televisions at the side of the trench. <laughs> so that as things were coming up, if we found a, a cartridge that we felt was playable, we'd, we'd put it in, go smack it in, and, and then, and then uh, see if it worked. And none of them played. One of the people who bought an ET game actually got it to work after a month of tender loving care um, with the ROM card, with the ROM chip. Um, but yeah, none of them played right out of the ground. Uh, one more question? Yeah, um, with, with with that, we, we, we're that's not a, that's not true with with ET, but it is with Pac-Man. With Pac-Man, they did 10 million units, and they'd only sold seven seven million consoles. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> um, with with ET, with ET, um, they did five million, reportedly five million. Of those, they sold three million, and of those, I think one and a half million got returned. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, that, that's why they had to get dumped somewhere because there was no space above ground that would accept that kind of stuff. Nobody was buying They couldn't give them away. Um, you know, so that's, that's what happened. So thank you guys again for coming, and I'm right over there if you want to talk some more. Okay.